Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Tonight on the show, we're taking yet another dive into data analysis uh, directly from the server. This has been provided by the developers, uh, the same as the market data analysis, and we're going to conduct a sort of a research to understand uh, what kind of ships blew up the most <laughs> because today we are going to look at PvP losses, most specifically uh, kill mails. Now before we get into our subject for today, please remember to like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing here and if you really want to help this channel grow and uh, help me keep it alive, there's a YouTube channel membership and you can donate something small as $2 monthly. So let's dive right into the subject. Uh, this chart right here represents the spread of factions and the ships lost for each faction uh, due to PvP circumstances, of course. So we have all the factions lined up on the X axis, the horizontal axis. We got the Jove, the Kalori, Minmatar, Mar, Galente, Yang Chung, Interboss, Or, Garista, Sancha, Blood Raider, Angel, and Serpentis. To, to make something uh, clear from the beginning, uh, the Jove is what the Jove actually provided to all the factions in the game. That is the capture layer technology, meaning all the Jove kills uh, are actually capsules kills. <laughs> so there's a huge number of capsules being destroyed uh, since the game has launched in August uh, 13 uh, until present day, of course. Now, the next best value is the ore category. Now, that means uh, 249,000 ore ships have been destroyed since the game has been launched. Uh, and if you know, if you don't know what ore ships, you can uh, pretty much go uh, into the top left, uh, top right corner. Uh, that's the ship tree review for the ore ships. Those are basically the mining ships. There's the all sorts of ventures, all types of ventures actually, and there's the retriever, and that's pretty much it. So we've got uh, close to 250,000 mining ship kills. <laughs> that's a lot. People have been hunting miners ever since the game has started, and miners uh, actually went into low sec and null sec regardless of the dangers that these uh, areas represent and of course they lost the ships. Now it's not necessarily people venturing into dangerous er uh, security uh, space areas, uh, also people that live in low sec and null sec of course, but it's very fun to see <laughs> that the most ships kills are uh, mining ships. Now the next best value uh, after all is the Kaldari, so we've got around 80,000 Kaldari ships destroyed, followed by Minmatar, followed by Amar, followed by Galente, Yangcheng, and Interbus. Interbus are the, you know, the haulers, the delivery service ships, and blah blah blah. And uh, on the uh, outer right side of the chart, we've got the the, uh, the pirate faction ships, we've got the Garissa's Chancer, Blood Razors, Angels, and Serpentis. The numbers are significantly low because uh, those ships are, let's say, less available to the general public. Number one, because they are expensive, and number two, because you need blueprints for those ships in order to build them and to fly them, of course, not necessarily fly them, just to sell them and other people's to fly them. Uh, but you need those blueprints that only drop in those specific areas where the NPC pirates reside. Uh, of course, by uh, doing those uh, Inquisitor or Scout anomalies, uh, I'm not sure about Death Space dropping uh, blueprints for uh, the faction ships, pirate faction ships, but nonetheless, um, just by concluding this, uh, it's understandable that these ships are less available to the general public. Hence, uh, why their numbers and the loss numbers are uh, reduced considerably uh, compared to the other faction ships. Now, would have expected the Yang Junk ships to be more in numbers because, well, people can just fly them into combat, lose them, use the uh, vouchers for reimbursement, and then assemble them back again in an instant, fit them up, and then take them again into battle. It turns out that uh, the Yang Junk ships are not that popular in terms of PvP. Now, the Interbus and all are definitely not. Um, 
PvP. Uh, of course, they're capable for PvP. You can do the battle barges and battle mining vessels, battle ventures. But most of these kills uh, are due to unwanted PvP, like other people just coming in and blowing stuff up without any response for, from the victim. Now, we can all assume that the most popular ships in EVE Echoes currently, from since the beginning of the game, are pretty much the Kaldari ships. Why? Because, you know, missiles pretty easy, they don't need tracking, they don't need blah blah blah, they just need to be inside the optimal range and you just need to fire away. And uh, the Rapids uh, have been favoured by the players uh, up until this uh, this recent nerf of course, but the, the Kalara ships have been dominating the battlefields regardless if it's PvE or PvP, this chart actually confirms this. And not to mention, if you fly in any of the systems, you'll see thousands of Caracals and Caracal Navy issues, and you get the point. And number two spot for player uh, desired ships taken into combat goes to Minmatar. Of course, Minmatar is in second place as the best favored PvP um, race uh, racial ships. They have powerful cannons, uh, they have good shields, and pretty much good ships nonetheless and they are very very viable for pvp even in solo as to in uh, big fleets or small gangs you know stab a fleet issue fleet just go and go crazy so that's pretty much it regarding uh, the uh, kills uh, spread over the faction moving on to the second chart that we have uh, that i've been compiling using the data uh, the raw data that has been provided to me uh, by the developers and that is uh, ship losses based on ship class uh, so we have the frig class the destroyer the cruisers and battle cruisers now before we get into the frigates and why the hell are those so high one important note the capsules are also considered frigates yeah the pods are considered frigates so all those close to 400,000 deaths are actually pods in there but that actually gives us an accurate number on the actual frigates that have been destroyed in the game since launch and of course it's around 300 ish uh, thousand uh, frigates destroyed in total uh, followed by the cruisers uh, that sit on a 90,000 uh, value, followed by destroyers, 33,000 values, and battle cruisers, 24, almost 25,000 battle cruisers being destroyed in PvP. Be aware, this, these numbers are all our PvP only. They do not take into account people flying into anomalies and dying because they fell asleep and something. No, it's just other players killing other players. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty f interesting to see that people are still using frigates or have used frigates for a big portion of time in terms of PvP or at least uh, it, the losses say that they have been using uh, frigates for a lot of their PvP engagements. Well of course if you take into consideration that destroyers are let's say a better version of the frigate in terms of DPS uh, and possibly tank uh, they are a worse version of the frigate. Why? Because after burn and micro warp drive, they cannot match the speed of a frigate. Plus, uh, note to self, up until recently, there have been no warp scramblers. So, frigates using micro warp drive could have orbited any other ship at close range. Uh, even, um, let's say, outside web range, and even inside web range, just one web is not enough to hinder a frigate moving at 5 kilometers per second and giving you any chance of hitting it with your tracking, uh, your gun's tracking speed. So one web would reduce from 5 kilometers to 2.5 kilometers. You'd need a second or a third web to actually hold that frigate in place to be able to land some blows on it. <laughs> so yeah, frigate is still the predominant 
uh, ship being used in PvP, or at least it was, uh, we'll probably see some increases in cruisers, destroyers, even battle cruisers, because we've got people are starting to hit tech level 8, and uh, sooner or later we're going to see a lot of battle cruisers and a lot of cruisers replacing those frigates. People have more money nowadays, and they'll be able to spend much more than just fly flimsy. Uh, frigates and of course introduction of the warp scrambler pretty much renders that strategy a bit useless of course you can still catch people off guard if they don't have a warp scrambler and using I don't know interceptors or assault frigates you can still catch people off guard and you can still make kills but if you die you'll end up in this big blob of a number the third chart for today actually represents a spread over the tech level in terms of PvP losses. Again, the uh, tech level 1 uh, also includes the Jovian ships, which is the uh, capsules, the pods themselves. So we've got a fair large number of pods being destroyed. Uh, that's around uh, or close to 400,000 you'd say 300,000 ish and then of course uh, there's people flying uh, uh, noob ships like the Ibis, the Velator, uh, you know those also fit into that category and of course there's people fighting in them because they're fun 50 of those ships uh, of those noob ships uh, can take down a cruiser <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in mind, it, it, it can be really fantastic to watch and you can actually do it yourself if you've got enough people in a corporation. The next big number in terms of tech level falls on in tech level 4. If I remember correctly in tech level 4 we have destroyers and we also have the uh, Mark II uh, frigates. The Mark II frigates, you know, like the Slasher II, the, Con uh, the uh, Condor II, the Atron II, those are basically ships and improved versions of the standard frigates and they're pretty decent to deal uh, sufficient DPS, they have good enough speed to maintain speed tank and they were pretty, uh, pretty versatile opponent and it, those ships were actually used in PvP a lot uh, in the first and second month of the game. They're still being used today if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the next uh, tech level uh, big number is tech level 6. You've, we've got the cruisers, and most of the cruisers, uh, followed by tech level 5, which is also cruisers and destroyers. Um, destroyers Mark 2, that is, or like the Catalyst 2, um, if I'm not mistaken, also the Catalyst Navy issue. Uh, on tech level 6, of course, we've got the Vexa Navy issue and Vexa. Uh, yeah, all sorts of cruisers and all sorts of destroyers fitting into tech level 6 and tech level 5. And of course, tech level 7, we've got the battle cruisers. And of course, we've got a really, really small number of tech level 8. People got their tech level 8 recently. I'm, I still have, I think I have two hours left until I reach tech level 8. But apparently people have already lost some interceptors because that's probably what they have been uh, using uh, just to test them out. Or even worse, they actually managed to build up the Drake nostalgia hit. I know the Drake is not that good. Fly at your own risk, but make sure you don't get with it into a high grade uh, story mission or else kaboom. Kablooey. But alas, these only include PvP kills, so there's no PvE losses there. So it's fun to see that most of the stuff that has been destroyed sits in tech level 4, 6 and 5, and that most of the kills sit inside um, the ore, <laughs> of course, the uh, the frigates, also the venture, uh, the venture trainer I think is also tech level 2 or 1 can't remember exactly but we've got this nice spread of information that could pretty much paint a picture of how people used what and how people lost what <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely in the upcoming future, uh, we're going to see an increase on the other side of this chart, the right side, uh, which is the cruisers, the destroyers, and the battle cruisers. And most interestingly, I'm willing to bet 
uh, that the frigates will maintain a high level due to the fact that we're going to have interceptors, but uh, the destroyers might also rise in numbers. Why? Because we have new destroyers that have been added into the game um, when the interdictors have been launched and we have uh, destroy interdictors, which is the small interdiction uh, ships class. Uh, and we also have uh, the cruiser interdictors that are basically tech level 8. Um, so we're going to see an increase in cruiser deaths as well uh, alongside the destroyers. I don't know about battle cruisers. People might be discouraged at first to use these. Um, at least the better, the bigger version, the tech tier uh, 8 versions in PvP. But given the fact that the Oracle, the Naga, uh, the Tornado, and the Talos are basically PvP ships. You can also do PvE with them, but they're mostly PvP that fit a specific role. Sooner or later, uh, we're going to see the uh, the numbers in these increase uh, a lot because people will start using doctrines and flying big. Uh, battle fleets using these ships because they can wield large guns. Expect to see heavy sniping fleets in the near future. Uh, expect camps on gate with such uh, battle cruisers that will just snipe you off in an instant. No remorse. So be really careful. Um, as a piece of advice, uh, since interceptors have launched and they're going to be pretty much available to the game if you're an Omega character and you've reached tech level 8 or you're about to hit tech level 8. Be sure to grab one because uh, those are the only ships that can fly safely through uh, bubble gate camps. And if the bubble is there, just make sure you have some uh, inertia stabilizers fitted onto the low slots just so you can warp instantly. Why? Because you're practically immune to warp bubbles, regardless if it's uh, a small dicta launcher um, bubbles, you know, the spheres that go after, go away after two minutes uh, sitting in space, or if it's the um, heavy interdictor uh, that also is available right now at tech level 8, forming a stationary bubble uh, around his ship. So, um, yeah. The Interceptor can basically fly through them regardless. So uh, on our next episode, we're going to explain all the information regarding your ship and the interaction with uh, the warp bubbles. Because I've seen on Reddit, I've seen on Facebook, I've seen on uh, Twitter, I've seen uh, in the comments as well, a lot of confusion as to how the bubbles interact with your player's ship in various scenarios so we're going to focus on that because that is a good tutorial and in uh, in the upcoming future and like uh, i don't know hopefully very soon we'll have a giveaway but we'll have more information on that when we get there so please stay tuned uh thank you guys for watching a very big shout out to my channel supporters see you guys next time cheers